Hi everyone, this is Venkatesh from Naresha Technologies. In this video, uh, let me explain the execution flow of your servlet program. In the last video, I explained one program in the execution. The same program I am showing here now. Here I had one web.xml. That web.xml is having three tags 1, 2, and 3. This is servlet, servlet mapping and welcome file list. I had one HTML file here and I had one uh, display servlet .java file. One Java file, nothing but one servlet program, one HTML program, one web.xml. Just I am trying to say the execution flow where it starts. Whenever I want to run this program, I am having one deployment directory structure. After rubbing this, after drawing this, I will draw one deployment directory structure. And here, where the control goes and how the execution happens, I am trying to say in this video. Now, whenever I want to run this program, I am using one deployment directory name. This is one deployment directory name. I am calling it as deployment directory name or web application name. The meaning of this is nothing but I will open my web browser. Already in the last class, I given the last video, I shown one execution of this same program. Whenever I am executing this program, I used one URL like this. I am using HTTP colon localhost colon 8082 means I am looking for Tomcat server which is running on the port number 8082 which is available from the local computer, local host meaning is nothing but available in the local computer. In the place of local host, you can access with your IP address. When the server available in the IP address location, you can access it. So, this 8082 is the port number of your Tomcat server. So, the meaning of this is I want to use this Tomcat server which is running on the port number 8082 available from local host. When it is available from local host, look for my deployment directory or web application name as display servlet. When this display servlet has been uh, identified or deployed, when the control comes to web.xml here, when the control comes to web.xml, from here imagine the control comes to web.xml. Control comes to web.xml. When the control comes to web.xml now, in this web.xml we had three tags. Now the control goes to this welcome file list. Now from this welcome file list and in this welcome file list tag we had welcome file means input.html file. This input.html file will be displayed means what the control comes to input.html. The control comes to input.html. When the control comes to input.html, this will be displayed actually. So, there the user is entering some name and I am, I am highlighting only form tag here. HTML has n number of tags. I am highlighting form tag. The form tag has two attributes here. One is action, one is method. Method is post and action is, action is on some URL. So, the meaning of this is nothing but after entering the name here by the user, after entering this name, we are submitting this, we are going to submit this. When are you submitted now? The action is performed on the URL. The action is performed on the URL. Now the control goes to web.xml again to check it out, where is that URL? So the control comes to web.xml. When the control came to web.xml, automatically I entered one name here. Control comes to web.xml. When the control comes to web.xml, I am looking for URL. So, I will be looking for the sub tag of URL, URL pattern of your servlet mapping. So, this I am going to match with this URL. Whenever this URL has been matched here, this URL, this URL, when it has been matched here, I will be looking for the servlet name. This servlet name will be matched onto servlet tag. In that servlet tag, I had servlet name. Now, this one is matched with this one when it has been matched here, now test.display servlet. I am looking for the class file known as display servlet available from the package test. Now, this test.servlet, display servlet must be loaded. Now, the control comes to, from here the control comes to here with the control 4. 
now this servlet program will be loaded right so that i am calling it as loading and instantiation part of your life cycle of servlet program loading and instantiation now whenever i identified the test dot display servlet automatically your display servlet dot class file is loaded for execution while loading only automatically instantiated it's a theory here then why you are using the method do post sir the request what is generated from your web browser may be two types get request or post request now how can we detect sir what kind of request it is means whenever i say method is equal to post method is equal to post if i write that is nothing but post request if i don't read uh, don't write this method attribute it becomes a get request whenever it is a post request i'll take the support with do post method now the control comes to this do post method now the instantiation process started so the life cycle will be demonstrated from loading instantiation request processing and your destroy process so now i am concentrating on life cycle of servlet indirectly now whenever i want to speak about your life cycle methods like this whenever i say in the life cycle of servlet we hide we highlight these stages loading process instantiation process initialization process request processing or handling request or uh, performing service whatever the word you can use it out here destroy process these are the stages we find in your life cycle so whenever you want to do this and just now i shown the program no overall flow so i'll show like this now whenever the control came to whenever the control came to web dot xml from the web dot xml input dot html file is identified through welcome file list among that we had welcome file input dot html just now we shown the document to you so whenever this input dot html file is displayed so imagine here one so this is the form and here we had submit here action is on url from web dot xml imagine the control came here the control came here when the control came here i entered some name now nit.v i entered one name i am submitting display whenever i submit this and using this url control goes to web dot xml when the control goes to web.xml already we had tags now servlet servlet mapping in servlet mapping you had url pattern from that url pattern this url has been identified just now i shown it once identified it is going to detect the servlet program now the servlet program will be loaded that is known as loading process servlet program has been loaded when the servlet program has been loaded automatically instantiated when the servlet program loaded automatically instantiated so i am calling it as stage 4 loading and instantiation instantiation loading and instantiation process here instantiation process means creating object imagine that this is one object 0 x 1 2 3 4 some reference to this object now loading and instantiation when it is a been instantiated now here one init method here one service method here one destroy method this three we are calling it as life cycle methods init method service method and destroy method right while this instantiation process going on here one object is created for your servlet config one servlet config object is created to hold configuration details 
the configuration details are holding. Now, IN IT service, but in the place of service, we are using do post method because the request generated from your form. I am using form and in your my program, I am using method is equal to post now. I am using do post method here. I am using do post method. But do post method is passed with two parameters, passed with two parameters. The two parameters are nothing but HTTP servlet request, HTTP servlet response. HTTP servlet request is coming from servlet request. HTTP servlet response is coming from your HTTP, sorry, servlet response. Now, whenever I want to pass the parameter here, definitely one response object is created. So, HTTP servlet request object created and one more HTTP response object is created. So, these references you are passing as parameter here, you are passing as here, these references are passed, these references are passed. So, my intention is like this now, whenever you instantiated means object created these three methods, the process of executing INIT method and initializing any variables or instance variables we are calling it as initialization process. After execution of your INIT method, initialization process completed. Once the initialization process has been completed, the control goes to do post method in the process of accepting the request. Whenever the execution of this do post method started, we are calling it as request to processing. But whenever this instantiation of this object is going on, we can find one object servlet config and we can find two more objects HTTP servlet request. HTTP servlet response. And once the do post method execution started, we are calling it as request to processing. But here, I entered one form data now here, name is equal to nit.v display. The form data will come and available in the request object. So, name is equal to nit.v, name is equal to nit.v. The form data will be available in this object, request object. So, whenever I want to get this data here, I am using no request req dot get parameter in my program I used. I am getting the data into my servlet program and I am going to display by using print writer pw is equal to res dot get writer. I am using java dot io dot print writer one class with that object I am going to communicate with your web browser through response object. I am using pw dot print ln some name what I retrieved from here. So, what you observed here now the process of executing this do post method we are calling it as request processing. Once the do post method execution completed the last method we are calling it as destroy. When the destroy method executed automatically that we calling it as destroy process. So, finally, the statement is like this whenever I want to execute one servlet program I am using one HTML file one web.xml, I am using one java file that is nothing but servlet to program. Whenever I want to run one servlet program, I am using like this HTTP localhost colon 8082 meaning is nothing but I want to communicate with the Tomcat server running on the port number 8082 that is called localhost available in the localhost. Looking for my deployment directory here. Once the deployment directory has been identified, the control goes to web.xml from there welcome file list from their welcome file input dot html will be displayed. When I am submitting my data here, I am putting my data and submitting it out using this action is equal to url control goes to web dot xml identified my class how it is identified url pattern one sub tag of your servlet mapping going to map with the servlet name with that servlet name it is going to identify your servlet class tested dot display servlet loaded and instantiated object created. When loaded and instantiated here one servlet config is created to hold your configuration details. Now, once this is uh, instantiated three methods are available here INIT service and destroy actually, but the depending upon the request what you are going to handle it. I use your method is equal to post now I am taking the support of do post method. The process of executing this INIT method we are calling it as initialization loading 
instantiation, initialization. The process of executing do post method, I am calling it as request to processing. But whenever I want to execute do post method, I need two parameters, request and response. So, the requests are declared by what now? HTTP servlet request, one object created. HTTP servlet response, one more object created. The references are passed as parameter here. The process of executing do post method, I am calling it as request to processing. When this servlet request, nothing but HTTP servlet request object created, whatever the form data available here, that is available here. Whatever I entered there, that is available here. So, from here I have to get into my servlet program. I am using request dot get parameter of the name what I given here. Automatically data is available. Whenever I want to display it, I am using print writer pw is equal to res dot get writer. So, there I am creating one object internally coming from java dot io dot print writer. Using that pw dot print, I am going to display this data. Once the do post method execution completed, automatically destroyed by using destroy process. This process we are calling it as destroy process. Now, this is the complete flow and small life cycle of your servlet to program and these are the important objects to be remembered. Whenever you want to execute this and I need one deployment directory, I will draw one deployment directory and show it. So, this is one deployment directory now. In this deployment directory, I am using input dot html. In this, I am creating one more folder web inf. In this web inf, I am keeping web dot xml. If you want to use any library, we can use one lib folder here. If you want to keep any library folders, you can jar files you can keep here. Now, in this web inf, I had classes folder. I had one classes folder. In this classes folder, I saved display servlet dot java. Java. After compilation, it is going to generate one package test. In this test, I can find display servlet dot class file. So, this is the accepted deployment directory of your web application. So, you can call it as deployment directory name or web application name. This only I call it as http colon localhost 8082 I am calling. Whenever the execution started, this is a deployment directory, control comes to web.xml. From web.xml, control goes to input.html. Whatever the data is submitted, the action attribute will show the URL control goes to web.xml. From there, identified your display servlet dot class file from the package test and loading instantiation, initialization, request to processing and destroying. This is the one small example to demonstrate life cycle with execution flow of your program. Thank you. Watch me on more videos in Naresha Technologies. Thank you.